Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. And what are we on? Part three of Noel. So I finished up um, this side of her uh, top. And that's pretty much all I did since the last time that we were here. Uh, before we get started, if you don't mind, please just take a second and pop up there and hit that like button. Um, especially if you, um, if you like my, <laughs> my videos and my channel, um, it makes a, a, a huge difference for me and I would really appreciate it. Okay, so I think we're going to start, well, yeah, we are. We're going just to probably, I'm thinking we're going to be able to finish this in in one more video. So um, we'll start working on the hat and all the little embellishments on the hat, and we'll see how far we get. So I am going to, um, I'm, to I'm thinking what is the best way to do the hat. I think that I want to do, we're going to do the fur first. Um, and the reason we're going to do the fur first is that if I put red in this part of the hat and then we come in and start doing the fur, I'm a f um, pretty sure that what's going to happen is we're going to transfer some of that red um, onto our pencil and the likelihood that we get red into the white fur where we don't want it is pretty high. So we want to avoid that issue. So I'm going to start with my white pencil. If you are doing this on white paper, um, then chances are um, the, um, the, gr the grayscale, maybe not the light, but definitely the medium um, and dark, obviously. Um, you should be able to see pretty well the texture that um, I created for the fur. And in that case, you could still come in and add white to the areas that you know you want to be white. But your main thing is going to be taking a gray pencil, um, maybe a 30% or this is a 50%, and just coming in and um, darkening all of the areas in between the, um, the fluffy fur bits. But since we are working on tan, um, we don't have to do that. We can, I mean, we are going to be adding those darks, but um, we need to get these, these lights established as well, these whites. So I'm going to just start at the top and work my way around the top where it covers up the hat, the red part of the hat, and then we'll just work our way down, I think. Um, this is the edge of the candy cane. We don't want to, we don't want to cover that up. So the fur on her hat gets done very closely to how we might do any other kind of fur. Um, any kind of fluffy fur, not not hair kind of fur, but we still want to kind of have some some uh, some clumps of of hair. And sometimes when you're doing clumps, having a duller um, pencil works nicely because your your tip is actually bigger, so you can it's easier to make uh, those clumps of fur. You just kind of have to experiment until you find what works best for you. And I'm going to come in here and fill in.
So it's actually very similar to like what we did with the cat just the last time where you have these clumps that are kind of going in, in random directions. Not really going up, they're all coming down, but they're, they're flicking off to the left and flicking off to the right. So it's almost like I'm making, um, I don't really want to call it a V because I'm not doing straight clumps of fur. I'm doing curved clumps of fur. Um, so, you know, we're kind of doing some going that direction and some going that direction, just, it's just random. Some can go the same and then every once in a while I'll flip and go the other way. This up here, I am going up instead of down, but at some point near the top, I'm going to start changing direction. Let's go ahead and go all the way around. What the heck, let's do the bottom edge too, and then we'll just fill in the middle.
again, turning your pencil occasionally is going to help. Um, help make it so you don't have to sharpen it quite as often. Go ahead and sharpen. Now when you sharpen, make sure you don't press as hard as you've been pressing or else you'll, you'll break that tip right off. That's definitely a make mistake that I've made many, many times. You get so used to the pressure that you're applying and then you sharpen it and you forget. It's like, whoops. <laughs> I think I'm going to start with the 30% cool gray, and if that's not dark enough, then I'll move to um, something else. So 30% cool gray to start with. And all I'm doing is kind of filling in some of the areas, you know, where I can see the brown paper. Or if you're working on white paper, you're just going to be kind of filling in or darkening those shadows. And then I'm going to go ahead and darken this all the fur as well right underneath the candy cane 
and maybe even the 50%. And then we're going to have to do that under here as well. since I already have this in my hand. I'll just keep going with it. Now the amount of gray that you want to add to this hat is completely, really completely up to you. Um, I'm kind of tempted. I don't want, I don't want the hat to look um, gray. But I kind of want to see what this 10%, this is 10% cool gray. Yeah, that's not going to do it for me. Okay, back to, let's go back to the 30%. So I'm, I'm also, in addition to putting some of this in the, um, I'm going to call it the holes, <laughs> the holes of the hat, um, where these, you know, where the tan is showing through. I also want to try and put some underneath some of the clumps of fur so that it it kind of provides a little bit of a shadow for some of the those clumps of fur as well we may have to go darker a lot. I don't think a lot of dark. I think just a few. Bits maybe. Come back in with some more white after. Let's do this down here. All right, I'm just going to see. Just, I think I'm going to just come in and, f yeah, 
So I'm not so much worrying about clumps now. Now I'm almost just doing not really scribbles, but single um, strokes, single bits. That looks good. We'll go with that. Okay, um, let's do the pine next. Is that what I want to do, pine? Uh, so, I've got um, gray green light, Prussian green, and kelp green. So gray green light, Prussian green, and kelp green. And I'm going to start with the gray green light. And I am going to put it in one of my extenders just to make things easier. All right. And then we're just going to put a little bit of that down in this kind of, well, where it's lightest, really. Um, kind of in the center of the uh, needle. Kind of down the We'll do that side separate. And then Prussian green. I'm gonna put that on the whole thing. some down the center. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to use this kelp green just to kind of maybe darken the tips and the base where it's where all the little needles are attached to the center point just to maybe like uh, I want to give it a little bit more definition in places. Pine needles are really quite easy because they're just lights and darks of greens. All right, let's do... A 
little more of this gray grain light in just a, a few highlight bits. And that'll work. We'll work around that again. Okay. I'm going to sharpen my gray green light, but I'm going to use sandpaper instead of um, my sharpener, just because, you know, there's still a decent amount of um, pencil showing through, and I, there's no point in me taking off more of that color pencil than I need to. So the sandpaper really lets me extend the life of my pencil. I'm going to do the same thing to my Prussian green. If you're having a hard time with control um, when you're flicking out, try starting at the bottom and work your way in. Sometimes that helps me because I tend to flick <laughs> and sometimes I get carried away. But if I start at the end and work in, I have a little bit more control because I'm not flicking so much. I'm being a little bit more cautious. All right, kelp green.
<clears throat> add some more gray green light. Kind of doing it in the center of each of the needles or some of the needles. That works. Okay, what's next? Let's do the candy canes. Yeah, let's do the candy canes. Um, I'm going to start with white. That way we don't contaminate the white by accidentally touching the red. And then I think just really lightly, I'm going to go ahead and put the highlight down the center of the candy canes. It seems to me, in my experience, that when I'm trying to do a highlight on... Um, using with red a highlight on a red object if the white is down first it tends to work better i hope i'm right i hope i'm, I'm remembering this correctly because i remember going to put white on top of red and it it gets pink whereas if i put the white down first and then the red it just lightens the red Anyway, that seems to be the case. Um, let's use crimson red for this.
I'm just really, really curious now about if I put some of this white on. Well, it's working okay now. So I'm going to, I'll go, I'll run with it. It's not causing a problem. But it looks better. All right, let's keep going. Let's do some. I guess putting the white on top of the red, at least this red, doesn't seem to be a problem. I just remember going to put white on top of red before and it turned, turned pink. Go ahead and use white in the center. And then I'm going to take some Tuscan red. On oh, just this edge. left side. I think that's good enough. Okay. Um, since I have the reds in my hand, let's go ahead and do the berries. I'm going to put a little bit of highlight in the center. And let's do some Tuscan red. And then the crimson red. If you're working on white paper, make sure you leave yourself a little highlight, a little white highlight, because you won't be able to add that in very easily, unless you, you could use a Posca pen to do it. Okay. 
Okay, what's next? Oh, I see. This is what happens. I missed a whole bunch of the white fur there. So let me get that in here. You probably saw it. I missed it. Holly leaves. We're going to use white apple green and Prussian green. So I'm going to put the white in first. Um, not heavily, very softly. We don't want harsh lines. We just want a little bit of lightning power, especially on the grayscale. When you use white under as an underlayer on grayscale, it really helps to brighten up your colors. So if you're ever working on grayscale and there's an area after you've printed it that you wish you know, you had done lighter or you had lightened it ahead of time. Um, put a little bit of layer of white on it and it will really brighten your colors quite a bit. Let's go ahead and put a layer of apple green, which is 912. So I think you can probably see how the areas that the apple green is going over the dark um, parts are pretty dark, but when I when I put it over the areas that I've added white. Now granted, here, let's do an experiment. So here's a dark part. Um, so let's add a little bit more white on top of that dark part. I did kind of tend to put it just on the light bits, but if I float that up onto the dark part and then we add this apple green So this is all the dark part, but we added light, we added white underneath. And you can see how much brighter that little bit right there is because we put the white on first. We're going to go right over the stems because we, we want those to be green. We don't want those to be white.
right. Let's do... I'm kind of thinking I'm going to add another color into this mix, but we'll see. Um, let's put some of this um, Prussian green. All right, I'm feeling like I need a different color. But I'm not sure what yet, so don't do this. <laughs> don't use this yet. Yeah, I like that. So this is dark green. To blend this a little bit. And I'm going to actually use my Prisma Blender for this. If it's um, if the sound is annoying, I I apologize. <laughs> 
does have a scratchier uh, sound than the colorless blender, but All right, I'm not quite where I want to be yet, so I'm going to break out the white. And I'm going to put some more highlights in. And then I actually might put in some black on here as well. one needs some more um, Prussian green. Let's get some black. I'm going to put some more white on the um, the little pointy tips because so I feel like they got lost. I read something really interesting about Holly. Um, and what I read was that it... Um, that the you've got some holly leaves that have really sharp points on them, like 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 you know the pointy bits, and you've got some holly leaves that don't. And the thing that I read, and I I I'm not going to swear by this because I didn't um, I didn't research further to see if it was right or not. But what I read was that when the holly is growing on the on the bush or the tree, I'm not sure what it would be called. Um, if if um, deer and animals are, um, are eating the holly, then the tree, um, when the leaves grow in, the tree makes the holly on the lower branches um, more spiky and thorny um, so that the, so the deer won't eat it. <laughs> and, um, but the, but the holly up high on the tree that is not being eaten, um, doesn't get those spiky, um, leaves. I thought that was, 
was really interesting. Um, so now that I've said that, maybe I need to actually like do the research and see if that's true or not. Right, I could probably use gray for this for this shadow, but I'm just using the black that I had in my hand or in my stash. Here. All right, so boy, I hope we're gonna get to finish this. Um, we totally did not work on this, and then the last thing that we have to work on is the um, is the hat, which I don't think is gonna take too long. So um, let me get the the fluff ball done and I'm also noticing I totally missed um, getting some color in here and if you uh, if you follow my channel you know that I have a really bad habit of that missing things <laughs> so maybe we can just use color pencil in there since it's such a skinny little area. Well, we are going to finish today because there's no point in me coming back just to do a red hat, so... The video will be as long as it is. bit of this is the 50% cool gray Um, let me pull out what I need for the reds. Um, I'm going to add some kind of, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> orangey color into the mix. So um, let me do that and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I am just going to see if this um, aquamarine... I think this aquamarine will work as a color for over here. It's just easier for me to do this than, um, you know, break out the gelatos. And it's such a tiny little area. And then let's see, maybe we'll blend it with white. I think that looks just fine. Okay, hat. Um, let's... I'm going to put some highlights down first. So all the areas that you see on the hat that are a little bit light, go ahead and um, 
how do I describe what I'm doing? You know, it's we're doing. I'm doing little tiny, small circles, um, and I'm just trying to put a soft um, lightness right in here. And if you're concerned at all that you're, um, that the grayscale is just, you're too worried about be it being too dark, then add more of the white. All right, on top of the um, white, I'm going to put poppy red. It's a very um, orange red. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to put a light layer to start with. I can always add more of this if we need to. Now, crimson red. I think I'll start down here. I don't know why, just because. I'm going to go ahead and use those my round squiggly strokes just like if I was doing skin or anything where I want a nice even um, layer of color. All right, and when we get into this area here, I want to slow down, be a little bit more precise. So I think I want to do a little bit of an experiment right here and make sure before I work up here that this is going to do what I want it to do. I'm going to pull out Tuscan Red now. 
I know, see, I was a little bit clumsy and got some red on my white. probably going to use some black in here as well. So I'm going to use my blender. Careful about your whites. All right, let me just a little bit more white. I couldn't remember when I did the original, if I put my white and then poppy down first or after. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're after right there. This poppy red, it just, it brightens. Really nicely. Okay, I like that. But I do think a little bit of black. All right. So, um, Yeah, I think that's good. We're going to have to add more of the poppy red and white, but that's okay.
add some Tuscan red. Although I gotta say that these lines here are really bugging me. Um, and that's just my own. I gotta fix that because it's just, I don't like it when the lines for my printer show. And it's usually just a matter of adding more pigment. Um, especially if you're using wax-based pencils. All right. Tuscan red. Let's add a little bit of, a little bit more white. And poppy red. Do a little bit of blending and then we'll add more white. Be really careful when you're blending against your white. And if you have to, change your blending tool. So for me, I'm going to use the one that gives me this nice, sharp, precision point. Because if you blend the white and the red, you'll just make a big pink mess and you won't be happy. All right, now I can switch back to the uh, color with the Karen Dash Blender. All right, I'm going to add some black.
some more white. Um, this is a little light on pigments, so I'm going to put some more Tuscan red on here. So now it's just a matter of deciding if there's any areas that need some more shadows. This is 50% cool gray. I might even consider something darker. Um, let's take some. Do something to make sure that this looks like it's incorporated kind of in under her hair a little bit. I think I want a little bit darker of a gray, so I'm going to switch to 70%. Make sure if you're going to blend, um, you've, that your blending pencil is is clean. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've picked up a blender to use it after just using it with a darker color, and that was a that was a mistake. All right, let us pull out. What color do I want to use? Um, I'm almost thinking espresso. Which, for whatever reason, is not... Bear with me. <laughs> While I pull out... Okay, so... Let's try espresso. I'm going to go very lightly because I don't think I want it to be as red as the chestnut would be. We could probably use some gray as well. I'm always worried about, about what colors to use for shadows on the skin.
that's not bad. I do want to blend it with something though. Right. Um, let's blend with peach. I don't know where any of my pencils are. <laughs> They're not, I didn't put them all away, so now I've got to find them. Nope, can't find it. Where is it? I don't know. So let's break out the backup pencil. So this is Peach. I just want to blend and soften that espresso. And then I have to decide if I feel like that's dark enough. There's, I kind of feel like it's not dark enough. And I've got one section here that was supposed to be, um, pine needles. So I'm going to fill that in with the green. better. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. All right. I feel like I want a little bit more shading under the hat here. All right, last to do is the um, uh, her earrings, and that's really going to make a difference. It's going to really make um, this thing pop. So I'm going to use a Posca pen for this, and hopefully I um, didn't make a mistake with my putting color pencil over the top. We didn't put a ton of color pencil on top. And because all of these lines are pretty short, I'm I'm pretty sure that the Posca pen will work just fine. Okay, so this is the leading I might go ahead and have to turn this because we want good control and usually pulling towards you, at least for me, pulling towards me gives me the best control.
want this line to be just a little bit thicker. I put a couple of little little dots kind of in amongst the hair there as well like they're sticking out through um, you know through the hair I think that's just fine all right was interesting trying to get this um, earring snowflake earring at the at an angle that made that made sense to the eye because it's not supposed to be you know straight flat on it's supposed it's it's bent so I had to figure out how to get that to look that way. <laughs> so if it's not perfect, that's why. All right, now I'm getting myself lost here for a second. Oh, that helps. <laughs> Upside down. It was... Okay, this one. I hope that's right. If it's not, it's not. If it's not, you can always throw some after it after the um, um, after the Posca pen dries. You can always throw some hairs 
over the top, you know, to conceal any, um, any mistakes. Because I know it's not perfect, but I think it's good enough. Um, these are supposed to go in. It's good enough. All right. Now, um, this is one of those cases where if you, um, if you're using your Posca pen and you feel like you messed up, um, have no fear because you've already got um, stuff down. You've already got plenty of layers of pigment and stuff. You can just take, um, I use a slice tool. If you don't have a slice tool, a sharp, you know, a, a sharp knife. Um, and you can just come in and scrape away anything that you did that you're not happy with. You want to let it dry first. And then you can just come in and touch it up. And it, it works really, really well for that. All right, guys, I am very close to being finished. I just still really feel like the shadow for this one is not sufficient. So I'm just going to darken this a little bit more. I don't know why. It just feels like it needed to be more. You can always soften it. That's better. All right, anywhere else where I feel like we need a little more? Under here, we need we need dark, we need black. So black under here. That's better. And then there's something about right here. Let's um Or uh, candy cane is right there. I'm going to take some gray. Just put a few. That's almost not. Maybe that's why it looked funny because it was too wide. Um, at this point, it's all about just fiddling, I think. There's nothing. There was just something right there that was... It's not perfect, but I guess it's good enough. All right. How am I feeling? I think I feel pretty good. The, the only other thing that I am debating on, and I know this was my battle when I was doing the background, was not having too many of these little circles. But I kind of feel like I want a couple more. So I have no idea if we're completely running out of time or not. Don't know. Let's try gelatos. <laughs> I can find them. <gasps> oh, too much stuff everywhere. Too 
Pretty projects. All right, I'm going to just try it. And if I hate it, well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try using my finger with the coconut gelatos. more of those. I'm just feeling like I want some more. I just feel like I want some more. So let's go a little bit bigger. What's nice about um, the gelatos here is that they're um, nice and sheer. So That's a good thing. I don't want them to be too bold. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, let's do one here. I want to vary the sizes a bit. Although part of me wants to go big. So... Yeah, that's good. I'm happy. Let's do one here. Let's do one here. I'm trying to do this one-handed. <laughs> okay. I think that's good. I don't want to go, you know, crazy. Um, maybe one over here. I know it's right on top of the gold that I did, but that seems to not um, be a problem. All right, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it good there. So, um, yeah. So there she is. You can see the the gold um, that we added with the brush. And, yep, I'm going to call that one done. Well, that only took three videos, so yay, that was a good thing. All right, my friends, um, the next one that I will be doing will be the last one for the year, I think, unless I can throw a simple little... Um, something in there in between and the next one that I'm going to do is not really um, a Christmas page um, but it is kind of Christmassy colors so that way um, that one can be um, can be done any time of the year it doesn't have to be um, it's not necessarily for Christmas only so um, that is all um, just in case I don't see you um, before Christmas, although I think I will. Um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for all your support this year. And um, I'll probably say all of this stuff again on the next one, because again, I think I will have one more 
um, I can squeeze one more in before the end of the year. So until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love to everyone. Happy coloring. Bye-bye.